Welcome to another World of Warcraft Cataclysm beta video. This is Chromar for TGN and we're going to go over the Priest again. This is a follow-up to the previous Priest ability video. Um, previously in that video I glossed over some things in the Discipline Tree, uh, specifically Evangelism and, and Archangel and Atonement, and said, oh, they're mainly for grinding they're, or possibly for PvP. And while those, uh, while that's partly true, there was a whole nother strategy that I was just missing out on and it just completely went over my head at the time. Um, I saw a great comment on that video that um, told me that you're actually going to be using those talents for healing somehow. I kind of kept that in the back of my mind but I didn't take it too seriously. But then I saw a forum post that said the same thing and I thought that was kind of interesting so I did a little more looking into this and I was really amazed by what I found out. There's a whole new strategy with uh, with discipline healing. It's just totally different than anything else that's in the game, any other kind of healing. And I want to go over that with you here. First, let me just talk about the talents in question. The first one I want to look at right now is evangelism. You have a 100% chance when you smite and when you mind flay to gain evangelism with stacks and your evangelism with smite increases the damage done by smite, holy fire, and penance and reduces the mana cost. Stacks five times so that reduces the cost by 30% and increases the damage. Now, let's ignore the shadow portion of that, because that's for shadow spec. And just focus on smite. So keep that in mind. The next one is Archangel. Consumes your evangelism effects, giving you 3% of your total mana per stack, and increases your healing done by 3% per stack. So 15% of your total mana, and gives you an 18 second buff, with a 15 increase in healing done with 30 second cooldown. So that's really powerful, and that's a lot of mana. And you want to be able to take advantage of this, but the only way to get evangelism up is to smite, right? So that's kind of weird. Hmm. So let's move on to the next talent. Now this is going to blow your mind. When you deal damage with Smite, you instantly heal a nearby, low health, friendly party or raid target within 8 yards from the enemy target equal to 80% damage dealt. If the priest is healed through atonement, the effect is reduced by half. Now I looked at this and said, oh, it's a low health target. So it's not going to be useful, except for grinding. Okay. Watch this. I'm at full health. It still healed me. Yeah. My evangelism is building. I'm healing myself with smite. I'm casting smite right now. Look, this is smite on my number one key. I'm casting smite. I got five stacks of evangelism. I'm gonna pop Archangel. Now I got the Archangel buff and I just got all my mana back. So what just happened? I'm healing myself with smite. It's not just healing yourself either. It can heal, it heals the, the, the party member that's in range of the target within 8 yards. So yes, this video is about smite healing. It's about healing by casting smite on the enemy target. This is really crazy. And this is intentional by Blizzard, by the way. This is not an accident. And here's how I know it's intentional, because there's a glyph that I have that's very important. This is like the most important glyph you have. It's a major glyph. Glyph of Divine Accuracy increases your chance to hit with your smite by 18%. Because Blizzard knows that you're not going to have any hit on your healing gear. And this causes smite to pretty much never miss. Your smite is, I mean, what's the see, what's my spell hit? I have a, I have a, I don't even know where I get hit chance from. I probably have some, this is all crappy pre gear. I probably have some hit on here somewhere. But um, ignoring that 1% hit, uh, it's about a 17% chance to miss a boss, according to this tooltip. So this basically means so you do not miss at all against anything, including raid bosses. That's why this glyph's here. Period. Yeah. So. That's intentional. That's not an accident. You're supposed to be smiting targets with discipline. With this spec. To heal them. And 18%. That's it's a raid boss. That's not a PvP or grinding. You don't need 18% hit for PvP or grinding. You need it for a raid boss only. So this has to be the intention of this combination of talents to smite the target and heal the tank. And you get all the normal bonuses you get from your atonement heal. Your atonement heal gives you divine aegis and so on. Yeah. Look at that. And I'm going to hit Archangel and get almost all my mana back. 15% of your total mana is returned to you. So that's discipline healing. You smite the target and then you gain healing from that. Okay, but anyway, so there's still more talents to go though. This isn't it. This isn't it. Train of thought. You have a 100% chance 
when you smite to reduce the cooldown of your penance by 0.5 seconds. Okay. It also makes your greater heal uh, reduce cooldown of inner focus, which is perfect because that's what you use inner focus for, is for casting free greater heals. But anyway, the main thing we're, we're getting this talent for though is the smite. Reduces the cooldown of your penance by 0.5 seconds. Penance is a 12 second cooldown by default. I have Glyph of Penance, um, which reduces the cooldown by 2 seconds, which is why the tooltip says 10. Okay, so I'm going to open by penancing myself, and I'm going to switch to the, the boss. I'm going to start healing it. I just want to get closer to make sure I'm in the 8 yard range. Spam heals. After a couple of heals, Penance is ready to go. Hit Penance. Let's watch the cooldown of Penance very closely. After two smites, Penance is ready again, so I'm going to Penance myself. Three smites, Penance. Each smite has a cast time of 1.9 seconds in this kind of, in this current gear. I also have the talent Divine Fury, which increases or reduces rather the cast time of smite. Penance, by the way, costs very is a very cheap heal. It says 2,800 mana, and you think, oh, that's that's a lot of mana. The 2,800, and smite costs 3,000 mana. Wow, that's a lot too, right? And heal only costs 1,800. Well, don't forget about this bonus from Exorcism. Reduces the cast. Reduce the cost, rather, of both Smite and Penance. So I'm going to open with Smite again. Let's just get five stacks up. With five stacks going, Smite's only 2300 mana and Penance is about 2k. Well, pretty much the same thing as Heal. So I'm going to pop Archangel to get my mana back. And then I'm going to start working on getting these stacks of Exorcism, or of Evangelism, rather, back up. With a 1.9 second cast, it takes about 10 seconds to get Evangelism going. And now you have your cheap Penance and your cheap Smite until Archangel's available again. Penance, Smite. Now, of course, this is going to heal everyone in your raid. This is not going to heal the range people. It's not going to heal the other healers. Still, so you will need to use the other tools, <clears throat> excuse me, the other tools in your arsenal for that including flash heal, greater heal, regular heal, and what have you. You've also got your power word shield, you got renew, so it's not like th this is to the exclusion of your other abilities. But for healing the tank, I mean this is this is amazing. This is the only way to do it. I would never want to use heal. Now you're probably thinking well, what about the amount healed, okay? So as you see I've been going for a little bit, I've even got grace going and whatnot, so I'm gonna just Pop another heal off, okay. What, let's watch the numbers here. Let's watch the numbers. Penichido is very powerful, of course. Okay, that was a crit heal for 10k. It's a little different. There we go. 6600, 6600, 6600. Now let's cast regular heal. This is regular heal. 5700. Yes, that's right. So my healing through atonement is stronger than your regular heal. I want to say, as uh, I'm going to make a little note here, though. On atonement, there's this this thing that says if the priest is healed through atonement, the effect is reduced in half. Um, this appears to be bugged. It doesn't actually reduce the effect in half. So I just want to point that out in case you're wondering. Like if you're thinking, oh, it's going to actually do you know 1,200 or or 10,000 healing. No, it's 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 just this is the real amount that you're going to see. This is the same amount you're going to see on the um, on the target. Now another thing about this is that uh, I mentioned that of course this uh, this evangelism buff is wonderful, right? I mean that's that's obvious it, because of the uh, the mana cost reduction. But keep in mind it also increases the damage of smite and uh, atonement damage. Atonement healing is based on your smite damage. So this is actually also increasing the damage by smite, hence increasing the damage of the healing rather of atonement. So when your atonement's up, you just heal for more. So in order to test this in the field, I decided to do a run of a random 80 dungeon, or a random 85 dungeon I mean, and I came up with Lost City of the Tolvir, and I'm glad I got this E1 because it is kind of easy to heal, so that helps me a little bit. Uh, so let's go ahead and skip straight to the first boss, as you can see. Um, what we're going to do here is I'm going to start spamming Smite, I'm going to keep the power shield up on the tank and try to penance as much as possible. Now, um, while doing this run, I discovered something amazing. Did you see how all those, those heals are popping up all over your screen there, all over the place? Um, I'm not casting any other spell except Smite. Now, if you were uh, listening early on, I didn't specify how this spell picks its targets. 
it says a low near uh, nearby low health target. It doesn't say specifically how it chooses its targets. Now, I would have never have thought to test this because I would have trusted the tooltip and just figured it healed the tank or it healed someone who's lowest or whatever. So I'm really glad I did this run. In fact, Atonement actually heals everyone in range. All of the melee, the tank, even the pets. The reason you saw those huge amounts all over your screen at the very beginning of the fight was because of the trents. It was healing the trents from the boomkin. It heals the DK's ghoul, it heals the DK, it heals the, ta the paladin tank, it heals everyone. That's within eight yards of whoever I'm smiting. So this is perfect, amazing for healing like your rogues and your and your whatever else, your melee. Uh, this is so much better than chain heal for that purpose. Uh, and chain heal is great for that too, but this is just, this is amazing. And you can just alternate between your smites and your penance, as I was showing you earlier. And make sure you keep a power word shield up on the, on the tank and all that. And um, you'll be able to keep everyone alive forever. I mean, this is so cool. The fact that it heals all the targets around the boss is so great. Uh, so this enables me to keep the DK up, although DK does take a lot of damage from various sources in its run. Uh, the Atonement helps a great deal. So let's just skip straight ahead to the last boss see him at. Um, first of all, I want to point out there's lots of line of sight problems on this boss in case you were wondering, so be very careful about where you're standing. Even though it doesn't look like it, all those pillars are like practically bugged in terms of line of sight. Even if you're standing on them, you can't, uh, you can't heal anybody. Anyway, um, the most difficult challenge I found doing this, this spell build was getting used to the idea of constantly switching targets from enemy to ally. Um, that is tough to get used to, and I'm sure that we're going to be able to develop macros that are going to improve that. I'm sure the Elitist Jerks forum will come up with something really impressive if they haven't already um, that helps mitigate that. I'm sure there's going to be add-ons even that help you do that. I could probably even just do it by setting the focus target. Uh, one of my add-ons was conflicting and wasn't allowing me to set focus. I didn't figure out which one it was yet. Probably like Proc Watch or something since it's broken anyway. But, um... What I'm, my point is that it's there's going to be tools in the future to help you use uh, smite and penance together um, without having to uh, deal with the target changes, hopefully. Because dealing with the target changes is probably the hardest thing. I'm using uh, the F key, but on, on these ads, I mean, this is why I wanted to show this fight, because this is an ad fight. Um, on, on these ads, being able to switch to the new target, it's pretty difficult. What I'm doing is I'm just switching to the tank, I'm hitting F to switch to whatever the tank is targeting, and that's probably the best way to do it. Um, or you could pick a DPS that you trust to be attacking the proper target and, and switch with them. Um, and that, you know, like this Boomkin here is really good, so I'm just would click on the Boomkin sometimes and uh, hit F. Same goes with the Mage. I hate this part of this fight, jumping jumping around here. I mean, this this uh, class is not an instant cast class. If I was on my Druid, it would be a little different, but here it's really tough to keep up uh, with all this crap going on. So I'm just trying to use AoEs to keep us alive. But anyway, so um, when the ads come out, I mean, and now that the ads phase is over, so I can just spam on the boss, it's a lot simpler. But spamming, you know, constantly spamming smite, healing all the targets around it, that's so wonderful um, for any situation where not too much is going on, it's not too chaotic. I think with more practice, I'll even be able to do it in more chaotic situations. During the run on some of the trash, I was able to do it except for when things got really crazy. Um, and then I had to panic and start mashing flash heal. I think the better you get at this, the less you'll have to rely on your other spells, and the more you'll be able to rely on this on this this uh, spec, um, pen and making sure you use penance instead of one of your other emergency heals, since your penance comes up so frequently. Yeah, so he's done. Um, I I just think it's something I really want to practice. It's something I found to be very fun, and I I can't wait to to make use of this in the real game. I mean, I can't wait for this. Honestly, if I put any healing class, I would have to play a Disc Priest. I wouldn't want to play any other healing class in expansion. I mean, healing is so much harder all around, but for the Disc Priest, it's totally different. It's so original. And it's so unlike anything else you've ever done. And that's why I like it. So anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hope this was informative. And I'll see you at the next video.